All right. Uh, hey, we apologize for that. Just some brief uh, technological difficulties. Can I just go back and start again? And I'm going to be very brief about this, all right? Um, next week, next week, um, a week from today will be our Thanksgiving service. It starts at 6 o'clock. We'd love you to be here if you can. It's going to go from 6 to 7. 6 to about 7.15. All right? As many as who can. We want you to be here for the Thanksgiving service. On the 25th, listen to the changes. Listen to the changes. We're going to start the Festival Lights on Thursday, November 25th. They're going to be available for public viewing for three weeks. That means they're going to officially, we're going to officially close that down December the 15th. The hours will be 5 to 7 every night. So any of you that want to volunteer, we certainly want you to do that. We're going to serve coffee um, and cocoa Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It's going to be available for three weeks, five to seven, coffee and cocoa, three days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. If you can volunteer, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay. State of stewardship meeting is going to happen on the 15th. We will give you a new Zoom number Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. Okay, a new Zoom number will be given to you Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. That's kind of what's going on with us for the next 35 plus days. Okay, I'm going to mention it again before I close just so you got it. All right. Hey, let's jump to this outline. Got a great new series. Again, principles from problems in the Bible. All right. And what we want to do today, the subject is, the subject tonight uh, is lack of excellence and the wrong priorities, okay? Lack of excellence and the wrong priorities. Hey, we went old school. In other words, we went to the Old Testament, again, to bring some contemporary uh, principles for us all to deal with, all right? I've already did the shout-out. I did that earlier. You probably didn't hear, but know the shout-out has been done. Ask your prayers for all the sick and shut in. Please keep that in mind. Hey, grab your Bibles. Go to the book of Haggai. It's only about three chapters, so that's your reading assignment. All right? Now, in the meantime, have your Bibles. Let's get into this. I want to use Haggai chapter number one and verse number three as the backdrop for how we're going to deal with this whole piece. God is asking a question, all right? You got your Bibles? Watch this now. Haggai chapter number one and verse three, and this is what it says. It says, then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in sealed houses and this house lie in waste? All I can say is have mercy, Lord. I don't know if y'all got the gist of that, but this is going to be a great little piece. All right. I got two parallels I want to address as I deal with this. All right. That's that is uh, the, the backdrop. Now, uh, Deacon Russell, can you give me verse number five for a second? Because what, what God is doing is he's asking a question, but in verse number five, he's giving them a demand. Now, therefore, saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You better think about what you're doing. Let me say it another way. You better think about what you're thinking about. All right? So that's going to be our backdrop today. All right? Uh, the subject, again, is lack of excellence and the wrong priorities. This is going to be a great series. All right. All right. Now, this study deals with some important years and what it normally talks about. It was a time right after the Jews had returned from Babylon. You know, they had been in captivity for a number of years. Uh, people call them pretty much exiles. All right. Uh, it was some very difficult years, some challenging years. I will admit that. Um, and not all the people went to Babylon. All right. The enemy left a group of Jews in their own land, Judah, at the end of the day. What it boils down to is this. Because of all that that's going on, we now see a more 
weaker uh, body of people. They didn't have all the things that God had blessed them with when they left Egypt. They had pretty much none of that type of stuff. Okay? And, and so there were some things that ultimately began to happen. They wanted, they wanted economic strength. All right? And then they wanted, to be, they wanted their nation to be safe. But they went about it the wrong way. All right. So as they're coming back home, the thinking was, well, maybe all these exiles, all these people that have been away are going to come back home and they got a lot of money. So we can make money. They got money. Everybody's going to be rich. Now, guess what they ultimately end up doing? It became so important to them to have economic power status, if you will, that they went on an ego trip. Now, the, the acronym EGO, E-G-O, means they edge God out, okay? Just like a bunch of Christians. They're going on an ego trip. They actually edge God out of the picture. Well, these people did that. And like I said, remember I told you there are two parallels here. So we're going to talk about this, but we also got to talk about believers as well, all right? And so at the end of the day, um, I think what we begin to see is that these people allowed their own selfish ambitions to trump their commitment and obedience to God. That sounds exactly like people today. That's the second parallel. I guarantee you what we're going to see in this outline, you're going to say that sounds like us right now. All right? And if you won't say it, i say it because I know it's real. All right? At the end of the day. Um, and, and so the bottom line is God had two prophets that was out there talking. One was Zechariah and one was Haggai. They both were prophets that were talking the same language. Okay. One was more of a, an image, a visual image type of speaker. That was Zechariah. But Haggai was just straight word. He just cut them with that word. And you're going to see that in outline. OK. And so as we go through this, uh, it becomes important to understand that this nation became a greedy nation. They were all about trying to get money. They were all about trying to build these extravagant houses. They were trying to live this lifestyle. But the problem was they were doing all of this without God. There's the parallel again. How many of us? are making plans and buying houses and buying cars and doing all this type of stuff, but we didn't ask God, we didn't consult God, we didn't pray about it. One of our friends got a car, so we got to have a car. Friend got a new house, we got to have a new house. Friend got a mink coat, I got to have a mink coat. Friend got some new shoes, I got to get new shoes. My friend got a new watch, $500 watch, I got to have a new $500 watch. Mm-mm. In this text, you're going to see two things. One is a lack of priorities, and two is a lack of excellence. And you're going to see that in just a minute, all right? And so as I go through this text, I think it's critical uh, at the end of the day, and you can help me with this. One of the things I noted about people, you see it in the text, but you know people, people are greedy for a whole bunch of things, all right? Um, they also need many things, but they find, listen, this is what I've discovered. I could be wrong. I don't care how many things you have. I don't care how many toys you have. I don't care how many cars you have. I don't care how big your bank account is. Those things will never satisfy you. Okay? Why do you think at the end of the day, Brother Patrick, people are always trying to find the next new high? And I don't mean drug-wise. I mean, think about this. People are bungee jumping off cliffs. They climb in Brother Fentress to Mount Kilimanjaro, up there with no, they got bodies that's in, that's in the snow that they'll never get out of there. No, no, no. I'm sorry, but I'm not going deep sea fish diving. I'm sorry. That's the place where the, where the, the, the uh, sharks, no, I'm sorry, I'm just not doing that. Okay. I'm, I, you know, I, I, I can say right now, I, I, that could change this sudden. I, I'm not jumping out no plane. There, there are some things, I mean, hey, uh-uh. I didn't reach the point where, it, no, that ain't on no bucket list for me. I'm sorry. 
All right, at the end of the day. One of the things I've discovered is people are so obsessed with money that they'll do any and everything, including kicking God to the curb so that they can get what they want, so that they can brag on, look at where I am, look at how much money I got, look at this big TV I got, look at what I'm, uh -uh. If you don't put God first, and I'm going to show you that in a minute, because you'll hear this phrase, I promise you, you'll hear this phrase I'm about to introduce to you in just a minute. At the end of the day, if we're not careful, here's, here's new life where we got to understand because God is confronting those people because they had a lack of excellence for the kingdom and they had the wrong priorities. All you got to do is look at the first four verses of Haggai chapter one and the story in a nutshell is right there. It's right there. All right. So let's do that. Can we can we do that? Can we pull up Haggai chapter one? And I want to read the first four verses. All right, let's do that if you will. Watch this now. At verse number one says this. Watch this. It says, in the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shittil, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, watch this now. Watch what God asked them. Or watch what they say in verse number two. Watch this. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, watch what God is saying about the, the children of Israel. Watch this. The people say, the time has not come, the time that the Lord house should be built. Watch this. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? That's the whole story in a nutshell. They had the wrong priorities. Here they were building mansions and swimming pools and all this stuff here. And God's house looked like one of them houses that, are, that you know, crack kids or people will go through and take all the siding off. Hmm? You know how they take all the siding off, they go in and take all the copper out of the wall, they take the furnace, you know, because once people see the house ain't there, uh, says Nelson, they'll go in there and just strip it. They'll strip that siding until they can't even get up there and get it no more. God is saying, I got a problem with you because instead of building my house and making my house look like what it should look like, your priorities is only on you and your house. You remember how Solomon had built the house of Sherry Jones? Uh, it was beautiful. God wouldn't let David do it. He let Solomon build it. It was beautiful. It was undescribable. It was destroyed. And now, instead of them rebuilding the house, they're focusing on their own stuff. Can I interject that I said there's a double parallel? Instead of you working on your spiritual man, you working on your fleshly man. Instead of you trying to gain a closer connection to God, you're trying to figure out how to look better and be more appealing and, you know, have people pat you on your back. It's not about you. It's not about you. You're trying to build all this wealth so people can talk about the nice car. And listen, don't misunderstand me because I'm going to set the record straight on that in a quick moment because you need to understand I'm not opposed to and neither is God opposed to you having good things. I'm going to show you that in Scripture, but it's how you go about getting them. All right. So I want to give you, if you will, I want to give you principle number one. All right. You need to understand there's a danger in being selfish. And I want to say that in terms of relationships. I want to say that in terms of our children. I want to say that in terms of our priorities in the church. I want to say in terms of how we serve. This is going to be very broad, uh, uh, far ranging and reaching. So here's principle number one. Watch this. The love of materialistic things, listen at this, is a snare that can cause you to lose sight of God. That's principle number one. 
That's principle number one because we have a lack of excellence and we got the wrong priorities. That's what God is confronting them on now. Now, I said I was going to set some things straight. Let me set them straight right now. First of all, understand this. Money is designed to handle all of our affairs. Okay? Let me give you a scripture to connect with that. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter number 10 and verse 19. All right. Now watch this text, and I want you to look at the B part of the text. Watch this. A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry. Now what Solomon is doing is, is giving you a definition or a purpose for what things are. A feast is made for laughter. So when we get together at a feast, there should be laughter. And if you drink wine, he said, wine maketh you merry. All right. I, I ain't going to deal with that right now, Dean Roscoe. <laughs> I, I look, I, uh, all the pastors said we can drink some wine. Uh-uh-uh. Uh-uh, bro, Finches. We ain't even going down that road, so don't y'all even try to justify that. Don't even try to twist your lips to even say that. Watch this now. Look at the, look at the, the third thing. He says, money answereth all things. The purpose of money is to respond to the needs of mankind. That's why we have money. All right? Now, here's, here, here's, here's something else you need to say. I said I was going to set the record straight. The lusting and love of money will cause calamity in your life. Money answers all things when you put it in the proper perspective. But when you lust and when you love money more than you do God and anything else, I promise you it's going to cause calamity in your life. Now watch this. Uh, go to 1 Timothy chapter number 6. And I want to start with verse number 6 and I'm going to read down through verse number 10. Paul is talking to Timothy and he's giving him some fatherly uh, some priestly advice. He says, godliness with contentment is great gain. Can I pause? Just leave me there for a minute. Paul is saying, learn how to be happy with what you have. Godliness with contentment. Be happy with what God has blessed you with. He said, man, you, you'll be worth more than you'll ever imagine in your life. Learn to be happy with what you have. Let me, I told you I'm talking two parallels. Here's part of the problem with people in church, part of the problem with people in general. You barely got that car. That car is a year old, and you're already looking at another car. You just got married, but you're licking your chops at somebody else. Until you learn to be happy with what you have, you'll never be content. Okay? I say that to young pastors all the time. Pastors take this church. And they're already looking at trying to go to another church. Mm -mm. You'll never be happy because you'll always find a reason. Listen at this, people. You'll always find a reason to never give 100% where you are because you're always looking at something else. You'll find the littlest thing to nitpick and whine and complain about to always say it's never good enough. Godliness without contentment is great gain. Now watch what he says in the next verse. Watch this. In verse number seven. He says this. He said, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can take nothing out. You, you normally hear that verse when somebody is, you know, doing a funeral or something. I know y'all heard that. Watch this. Go to, go to the next verse. He says, watch this now. Paul says, in having food and raiment, let us be there with Learn to be happy if you got it. That's what he said. He had to come back and say it again. Now watch what he says. Here is the warning in the next two verses. 
But they that will be rich, those that are striving to be rich, those that are striving to be famous, those that are striving to have everybody pat you on the back, to say you got the nicest car, you live in the fanciest house, you got all these. He said those that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. Watch this now. Not only do you fall into the temptation of desiring pats on the backs and people looking and doing all this stuff. He says, and then you fall into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. When you're always trying to get rich, you're going to be duped. You're going to be taken advantage of. You're going to hurt some people. You're going to lose tons of money. And at the end of the day, you're going to be far worse off than you can ever imagine. Can I help you with that? Let's just hypothetically say you go to the casino and you put that quarter in and $500 come out. All right? What's in your mind? Ooh, I didn't hit. I, this must be my night. I got to keep playing. <laughs> I mean, for real. Bro, Fentress, that, that's the real deal. For real, for real. So guess what? Instead of keeping the $500, you play it all back, and before you know it, you not only spent the 500 but you didn't spend an extra 200 of your own money. Hmm? Watch this now. Watch verse number 10. In verse number 10, he says this. Watch this now. He's, I want you to see this text. He says, for the love of money is the root or a root of all evil. Money is not evil. It's the lust. It's the love of money. Watch this. Which, some, which while some coveted after, they had, watch this. Because, listen. When he say, watch this now, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. Don't you miss that? What Paul is saying is there are some people in the church that want money so bad. They want publicity. They want fame. They want fortune. They want it so bad they have literally walked away from their relationship with God just so they can get it. Do you now understand the principle for tonight? Lack of, evan lack of excellence uh, and the wrong priorities. People do anything for money. They, they'll sell their bodies. They'll lie. They'll steal. They'll cheat. They'll do people. They don't care. I, listen at this. Bro, Fincher, this is going to blow your mind. I was listening to the radio station today. And, you know, right about now, um, there's a lot of scamming going on. Now, listen, this is a true story. There's a lot of scamming going on. This, this lady or this, this person called this elderly lady and said, Grandma, I'm in jail uh, for something, and I need you to send me some bail money, or else they're going to lock me up. I don't want Mama to know. Now, number one, Brother Fentress, the lady didn't even know if this was her granddaughter or not. That's number one. She told her grandmother she needed $10,000 to get out of jail. Do you not? And then the girl, when she said that, she put another voice on that was an attorney that said, it's really serious, but we think, you know, we can probably get her out uh, until the case happened. That woman sent them $10,000. Now watch this now. What they did is they figured out that this woman was gullible, so they kept trying her. Watch this. This is the long of the, this is the, the, the short end of the story. This elderly woman was a rich woman. And I'm going to tell you, she was rich because by the time they finished swindling that woman, they had taken $700,000 from that woman. They kept calling her. They kept making up all these lies. They didn't care that this was an elderly woman. All they knew was she was rich, and every time they called, she was going to send them money. I'm going to tell you right now. If, 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 if somebody called me that said, hey, daddy, this is Trevon or Trinell, I'm in jail, and they told me I need 10000 bro, you're just going to be in there. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, because at the end of the day, bro, Sims, 
And so I'm saying to all of our elderly, it doesn't matter what they say. If they say your granddaughter's in jail, if they say you owe money on something, are we going to take to the collections? Have your son and your daughter check stuff out. Now, let me say this to uh, uh, children that have adult parents. We know that as, our, as some of our parents get older, they become forgetful, and some of them might be dealing with beginning stages of Alzheimer's. They may make decisions that may cost them a lot of money. So you need to be intricately involved with your parents' affairs. You may not be there 24 hours a day to hear what they talk about, but at the end of the day, says Schaefer, if you're not monitoring your parents and their welfare, your parents sometimes out of their right mind will make some decisions. I heard that today. Okay? People don't care who they take advantage of. They just want to take what's yours. Okay? They want to take what's yours. In this text, Deacon, your God is confronting the people. God said, wait a minute. How y'all going to live in mansions and my house look like a shack? My house is this close from being condemned. It's because a lack of excellence and a lack of priorities. I want to push you a little bit because I'm saying that about your spiritual well. It just blows my mind, Mother Jackson, that you've been in church. I ain't talking about Mother Jackson. I'm talking about just people. Been in church for 20 years and still can't quote a scripture. Your priorities are wrong. You building a house and you building a family and you building a 401k and you getting a new car, but you ain't took no time to work on your spirit, man. There are two parallels. Your priorities are wrong. You come to church and you get, listen at this. <laughs> I, I could be wrong on this. I think I'm right in the ballpark. But listen at this, says Jay. I guarantee you since Sunday, I guarantee you if you ask five church members, watch this, Brother Fentress. I guarantee if you ask five church members what was the subject for Sunday and what was the first point, four of the five won't be able to tell you. Sister Blanche Williams, Brother Charles Williams, I guarantee you they can't tell you. Because it's not a priority. They're not feasting on the word. They're not meditating on it. And that's why we continue, Sister Patrick, to struggle. The message ought to still be in your spirit. Okay? At the end of the day. And so when I look at this text, I, let me show you this here. Um, I told you, first of all, money is designed to handle all of our affairs. I told you that. I told you lust and loving money will cause calamity in your life. I just read that. Here, here's what you got to understand. Here's another thought for you to think about. God's provisions only will bring you true blessings. Now watch this, Digging York. Let me give you a scripture. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 21, 22, and 23. Now watch this now. I want you to get this. It says the tongue of the just is as choice silver. Stop now. I want you to see this. What is God telling you? The tongue of the righteous is as good as gold. That's what he's saying. The heart of the wicked is little worth. Solomon is making a comparison here. Watch this. Go to the next verse. Watch verse 21. The lips of the righteous feed many. But fools die for want of wisdom. Are you seeing that he's making it? Now watch verse 23. This is what I want you to see. I'm sorry, verse yeah, 23. Watch this. The blessing of the Lord, says Sherry Jones, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Watch this, Brother Patrick. You can tell the difference between worldly gain and godly gain. Because when God gives you something, there is no sorrow to keep it, there's no sorrow to have it, and there's no sorrow to enjoy it. What am I saying? Some of us are driving cars. It's a pain to even make the payment. <laughs> 
Watch this brother. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, Ding Roscoe, Ding Stewart. Watch this brother Patrick. If God told you to get that car, why are you struggling to make the car payments? Huh? You, can you put the verse back up there again? I want, you, I want you to see it now. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh thee rich. And he, if, listen, if God told you to get that car, God would not have told you to get a car. You was going to struggle to pay it. You didn't talk to God. All right? You know, you done went out and bought all this stuff, and now you can't pay your water bill. Uh-uh. That is not the way God designed us to live. I, I hope I'm making sense to you. Because, I mean, some of us are living in houses that we can't afford because we want to impress somebody. All right? You want to show me you live in a five-bedroom house. You want to show me you live in a three-bedroom apartment. It's only you. What you going to do, sleep in each bedroom every night? Come on now. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh thee rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. That's how you can tell what is God-driven or flesh-driven. We got to be careful how we spend our money. And if you haven't gone to God, then you're going to have some sorrow doing what you do because something is going to suffer because you're trying to keep something that was never supposed to be yours. You know, I, I mean, think about this. So you got to have a brand new car every year. For what? I, I'm just asking questions. Now, if God told you to get it, I, I, I'm not trying to tell you not to. Don't misunderstand me. However, I'm trying to ask you, did God tell you or did you tell you? There you go. All right. So listen, let me help you with this. The love of money uh, or the love for money, listen at this, can be defined as an intense and selfish desire to get more money. Hmm? And it is a bad character just like his mother called greed. I got to have money. You ain't even spent the money you got, and yet you're trying to make more money. I'm trying to help you. Watch this now. The love of money is a sin. I know you know that. And just like lust, it's common to all men, Christians included. I'm not telling you not to be blessed. I'm not telling you not to have this. I'm asking you, did you obtain it under God's roadmap. And let me say this. If you didn't, are you now using the wisdom of God to use what you have? Because when you do it that way, Sister Marshall, uh, God will bless it. Okay? God will bless it. So when I look at this, there again, I want to take you back to the text. Go back to Haggai chapter number 1, verse 1, 2, th well, go to verse 2, 3, and 4. All right, because one of the things that I understand, and I know you know this, but let me help you. Those who are willing, or those who love money, or are lovers of money, they will do anything for the sake of getting money. And that includes swindling your own mama, cheating your own husband, hiding stuff. <laughs> I, you can say ouch if you want to. All right. Not exactly telling the truth. Huh? Look, people will do anything um, for the sake of money without considering the morality of it. So they don't mind killing folks. I, I mean, think about this. I, I want you to go back to the 90s. People were selling drugs to their own mama to make money. Huh? They would sell drugs to their brother. They sell it to their sister to make money. Are you hearing me? Now, I ain't talking about nobody or nothing. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. They'll kidnap. They'll bully. They'll steal. They'll kill. They'll destroy. People are killing people right now. Sister Tatum, they, I, people taking their husbands and wives out for the life insurance policy. Hmm? They're killing people right now 
for their life insurance policies. And people have gone so far since late to even kill somebody and then hide under a different name so they can get the life insurance policy. Those are actual true stories. So I want you to see this in the text. I want you to see this now. Uh, Haggai, chapter number two, watch this. I want you to see it for yourself. Watch this now. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, this people, <laughs> uh, brother, brother uh, Deacon Roscoe, I like the way God talking about us. He said, this people say the time has not come, the time that the Lord house should be built. Hmm? Like, no, Lord, we, you know, Lord, we, no, we ain't building your house right now. Watch the next verse. Watch this. Watch what he does. And he say, and then the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, um, uh, then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet. God said, that's what they say, but now, Haggai, I need you to go tell them something. Watch what he asked in verse number four. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your mansions and my house look like a crack house? It looked like a shed. It looked like it's about to be condemned. Now, let me throw another thing out there for us because when it comes to this building, we must accept nothing but excellence. This is where the spirit of the Lord dwells. This is where God tabernacles. And, and we don't want the house to look good. And watch this now. <laughs> Ding Roscoe. We're coming here into the sanctuary with popcorn and potato chips and ho-hos and ding-dongs and all that stuff, and like we had a movie. This ain't a movie. And we'll leave our trash right here with no regard for the house of the Lord. I, I never will forget, when we were redoing the pews, it was amazing that when those guys pulled the backs of the book things off, how much trash was in there. People had stuffed all types of gum and wrappers and stuff all down in there. It was amazing to me how much trash. Watch this now. And people are still doing that now. We're coming in and turn up a fruit juice like, it, like we had a bar someplace. This is the place where God dwells. And when we come in here, there ought to be a reverence for the house of the Lord. This, is, this ain't some bar. This ain't some hangout. This is where the spirit of the Lord dwells. This is where the Shekinah glory lives. Even when you park in the parking lot, you ought to have reverence because the ground that you're on is holy ground. And let me say this to you. As a household of faith, we should want nothing but excellence and the best for this place. At the end of the day, that's what God demands because he dwells here. How y'all going to build a mansion and my house look like a shack? How would you feel? And I say, I want to push it. How is it that you can build yourself physically? Let me help you with this, sis Wafer. I, I'm not opposed to you going and work out and getting physically fit. But many of us are not spiritually fit. There are two parallels in this text. One has to actually do, uh, uh, Brother Brown, with the, with, the, with the physical house of God. And one has to deal with the physical house of God. Two places, the building and the body. And we aren't taking care of either one. And so when I look in this text... The love of materialistic things is a snare. Listen, okay, let's say it like this. You come in here and you can bring out a big old wad of money, but you got to work seven days. Hmm? How you going to ever enjoy it? What, what you doing, saving it so that the next person come along that's going to marry your wife can enjoy the money? And so when I look in this text, God is telling us something. Let me see if I can help you. Uh, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 7 through 9. 
This thought that we're focusing on right now is lack of excellence and the wrong priorities. Now watch what God says in Proverbs chapter 30, verses 7 through 9. Watch this. He's upset uh, in Haggai chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, because the people that were his were building their houses and not taking care of the church. He's confronting them. Now watch this now. Here's Solomon giving some very great advice. He said, two things have I required of thee. Deny me them, not before I die. Now watch this now. Here's his request. Remove me, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food. He said, look. No, no, no. Don't put me in. No, I, I don't I want to be as far away from that stuff as I can. I don't want to be a gossiper. I don't want to necessarily be around lies. I don't want to have to deal with poverty because I'm going to do my money straight. And don't put me around no riches. Don't put me in any of them trick bags. I'm going to be happy with what I got. All right. Watch verse nine. He says this. He says, lest I be full. If, if you put me in either of any of those trick bags, he say, lest I be fool, lest I be so focused on that and deny thee. The thee is God. Lord, let me not get caught up in lies and publicity and money and fame that I get so far that I deny you. And when somebody say, who is the Lord? I don't know who he is. Lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Are you seeing what he's saying in 789? Don't ever let me get so caught up in money and fame and fortune that when somebody say um, who he is, I don't know who he is. Lest I be poor and steal and take away the name, take the name of the Lord in vain. Never let me get that far away. That's what he's saying in that verse. Watch this. Let me give you another verse I want you to look at. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 10. Here God is. He's telling the children of Israel, you're about to go and inherit this land. All right. I'm about to give you some stuff. I told you. I told your forefathers I was going to give it to you. Watch this. He says, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land, which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou didn't even build. Watch this. I'm going to go down to verse 15. He said, and look, God said, I'm going to give you houses that's already furnished. You ain't got to do, the well's going to be full of water. He said, you're going to have olive trees and vin You ain't going to even have to go and plant nothing. I told you I'm going to drive everybody out. I don't think people really understand what God actually meant. Can I help you? Just leave it there for one second. What God is saying is, Tatum, I'm going to take you into the city of Saginaw. You can pick any house you want to pick. It's already furnished, everything. You can take any house you want. You ain't got to build nothing. You ain't got to worry about the garden. You ain't got to worry about no bills. Everything that you want, choose any house you want. That's what God is saying to them. Now watch this now. He says, when thou shalt have eaten, you're going to be full." You have a house you didn't build. You have vineyards that you didn't plant. You have everything you want. You're going to be full. Now watch what he does because he begins to change his language in the next one. He said, then beware lest thou forget the Lord. You, you see the message? Don't get so caught up in this that you forget who gave it to you, who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Don't get so arrogant. Watch this now. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. Watch verse 14 and 15. You shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. Here's the warning. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of thy, the Lord thy God be kindled against thee. And destroy thee off the face of the... God said, don't you go on somebody else. You're going to make me jealous. And I'm going to have to do something to you. All right? Looking for materialistic things. All right? 
Watch this now. Uh, look at, look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, and I want to start at verse 10. And I'm not going to read all this because you really need to read down through verse number 20. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to read probably down to verse about 14. He said, watch this now. When thou have eaten and are full, then shalt, then shalt thou bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he have given thee. Watch this now. Watch what he says. Here's another warning. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. I know you're saying, Reverend, that's the same thing. No, it's not. The first one was in chapter 6. This is in chapter 8. It's another warning. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and statutes, which I command thee this day. Watch this. Keep going. Lest when thou hast eaten and are full, and, have, and has built goodly houses and dwell therein. Here's the warning that's going to come up in the next two verses. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all thy has has multiplied, watch what God tells them. Then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee out, Forth or brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. Look, God say, look, don't you get so caught up in all this stuff that you forget me. Because sometimes that happens. When people get a little publicity and get a little money, they forget the Lord. When you read the rest of that verse, God tells them at the end of the verse, he said, listen, if you do that, I'm going to bring some scunion on you. He makes it clear when you look at that verse. Now, real talk. Let's be just very honest. All right. We all have the desire for new things, all right? Real talk. We all want more money. We all want better homes. Listen, listen at this. But all must be kept in the right perspective. It must be done God's way. Watch this verse. Let me help you, Sister Salter. Matthew 6 and 33. Listen what God says in the text. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else you want, I give it to you. You cannot try to play uh, church and play the lottery at the same time. Lord God, you know I love you. I've been serving you, Lord. If you just let me hit, I clap for God. Mm-mm. I want to show you a text because God made a promise to uh, those people that Hagar was dealing with. You hear this text, you hear this phrase a whole lot. I want you to actually see it in the text. All right. See, one of the things I understand is, and I get this, we're human. And so what do humans do? We think about new clothes. We think about stuff. All right. But Jesus warned that those who are not true Christians that will become their compulsion. You'll be obsessed with that. Okay? You'll be obsessed. I got to get new clothes. I got to get this. I got to have a new outfit for Easter. got to have a new. That's why you always hear me say, I see you got your new little Easter suit on. All right? There are some people that I got to have a new suit every Easter. For what? Huh? And, and one of the things I discovered, Brother Fentress, is some people will wear an Easter suit, but they'll put the tag on the inside so they can take it back when they finish. Now, y'all know that's true, because we all know somebody like that. All right? Watch this now. I want to show you something. Um, here's principle number two. Principle number two. And I want you to see this. Principle number two says this. Carnal believers will always find it easy to attend to their own interests first. Notice I said carnal and notice I said believers because you can be saved and be carnal minded, worldly minded. You'll always make you Priority number one, your interests, your desires, 
what you like, how you want it done. Watch this text. Let me see if I can help you. Uh, Haggai chapter 1, verse number 2. Let's see if I can get my little. Watch this now. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time has not come. Listen at that. That the Lord's house should be built. It ain't time for us to do nothing with God's house. Man, we're we working on our own house and stuff. We're trying to get rich. We ain't got time for that. Do, do you see it? The only thing they interested in is what? Them. All right? Now watch this now, because I, I want you to, and Dean Roscoe, you may have to help me with this, um, because I want you to see what, before I end tonight, I, I, I'm not going to be able to get as far as I want, and that's not my intent, but I want you to see that. Um, as I'm going through this text on tonight, I'm trying to look so I can find it. I'm cheating a little bit. Um, let's see if I can find it right, right quick. All right. Um, okay, there we go. Watch this now. I want you to see this for yourself. Uh, if you would go, go to Haggai, chapter number, chapter number one, and I want you to look at verse number, uh, just go to verse five. I'm going to read from verse five down to verse number six. And I want you to see what you hear us say often, but we never knew it was in the Bible. I want to show it to you right now. Thus, watch what God does now. God didn't already confront him, say, look, you better consider, you better consider what you're thinking. You better think about what you're thinking about. Y'all remember that as a kid when your parents would say, you better think about what you're thinking about? <laughs> Dean Roscoe, you remember that? You better think about what you're thinking about. All right. Now, God's said, God saying the same thing. Watch this now. Now, watch verse 6. You have so much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe, but there is none warm. <laughs> Watch this. And he that earneth wages, put them into a bag with holes. Woo! I got to open that up next week, but I want you to see it. Because God said, because you have not put me first, everything you work for, you can work as hard as you want, but the results are going to be very little. You're going to eat, but you're never going to be full. All right? You're going to drink, but you ain't going to never be filled with your drink. All right? You're going to get some clothes, but they ain't going to never keep you warm. And those of you that earn money, yeah, you're making a whole lot of overtime, but it's going to be like putting the money in a black hole. Mm, mm, mm. I, Lord have mercy. Yo, I wish y'all getting this. I hope you're getting it. Because what God is telling those of you that rob him and tithes and offering, he said, that's why you're in the same predicament. Mm, mm, mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God say, because you robbing me, You'll never prosper. You'll never be blessed. You'll never have enough. You'll always want more. What you have will never satisfy you. It'll tear up. It'll rip. It'll, something will happen to it. Why? Because I'm not first place. Lack of priorities. Lack of excellence for the house of the Lord. Stay tuned. Read the chapters. It's only three. You've got to read this for yourself. So you can see what's going on. God is addressing the church right now because the church will not take care of his house and will not take care of this house. Their priorities are wrong. What about you? Does your giving reflect how good God has been to you? Does your service 
reflect how good God has been? Think about this. I gave you these numbers last week. It's amazing to me that almost every day we got a program we watch faithfully. We watch it religiously. But can't get, and watch this now. Let's just do some math. Let's just say the program, let's just say the program is, is an hour a day. That's seven hours you put into watching TV programs times four weeks. That's 28 hours. Okay? You go to church for an hour and a half. That's four, uh, six hours that you give God, but you give 28 hours to watching amusement. What are you building? Because you're not building the spiritual man, you're building the physical man. Have no problem with you working out. Go to, the, go to the gym every day. But do you put the same amount of time into your spiritual man that you do into your physical man? I told you this thing had two parallels. It's not just about a building. It's about this. You do know this is the temple of God, right? It's time to do some inventory. Let me tell you this one more time so you get this about next week. Next week, a week from today, we're going to have a Thanksgiving service, 6 to 7. 6 about 7.15. We'll just be closing around this time. The very night, next day, says these. very next day is going to be the Festival of Lights. Here is the time for the Festival of Lights. We're going to start it next Thursday. It's going to be open from 5 to 7. And we've made some slight changes to how long we're going to do it. We're going to do it from December the 25th until, I'm sorry, uh, November the 25th until December the 15th. That is three weeks from 5 to 7. We're serving coffee and cocoa Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Do we need volunteers? Yes, we do. All right? Yes, we do. If you can volunteer, we got fire pits you know, we got, you know, we got stuff to keep you warm. We just need people that are commit to at least one day for the three weeks. Can you do three days out of the three weeks? Can you do a Monday for three nights from five to seven? And we're not talking about one person doing it on their own. We need several people that will be there with them. So get a couple people that you want to hang out with. Uh, come on out. Let's enjoy as people come in and see what God is going to do. All right? Hey, we've got some, some members that are doing some academic things right now. We're praying for you. We've got some members that's going through some tests right now. We're praying for you. We've got some members, health-wise, are making progress. We're praying for you, praying for our elders, praying for all of you. Hey, read the lesson. And let me say this. I said stay tuned for next part two. It won't be next week because we'll be in Thanksgiving service. So it's going to be the following week. Read the lesson. If you got questions, text me, call me, inbox me, whatever you need to do. I'd love to have some dialogue about what's happening in this text. It's powerful. Okay? God bless you. Listen, don't forget our giving. Since I'm talking about giving, since I'm talking about taking care of the God's house, several ways you can give. And let me say this to many of you, first and foremost. If you're giving to Givelify, Givelify has updated its logo. So if you give by Givelify, the logo has changed, okay? I'm hoping to have the updated logo to share with you. It's red now. Is it the same way? I think it's still, is it still in the little box? Okay, hang on a minute. Well, while he's giving me that, Cash App, uh, dollar sign, New Life BCM. Uh, PayPal, New Life BCM, our website, www.newlifelcm.com. You can mail your gifts in. Um, New Life Baptist Ministries, 1401 James Avenue, Saginaw, Michigan, 48601. You can drop your gift off uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, between the hours of 10 and 4. Okay, between the hours of 10 and 4. Now, this Friday, FYI, the building will be shutting down a little bit earlier than usual, all right? So if you want to do something Tuesday, it needs, I'm sorry, Friday, it needs to be by 1.15, okay? By 1.15. Still the same thing? Okay, so the new logo for Giblify is an orange-like color. Hang on a second. Okay, it's in an orange box. 
Um, and the letters are white, but the backdrop is orange. Okay? So just be aware that if you go to give it a fine, you say, wait a minute, what happened? It's still the same thing. They just changed their logo just a little bit. Okay? Hey, God bless you. That is our prayer. Hope you have a great uh, evening. And listen, don't forget this. COVID cases are up across the country right now. And the main culprit is not COVID. It is the Delta variant. Keep your mask on. Keep sanitizing. If at all possible, try to do as much socially distance wise as you can. Okay? Wear the mask, put it all the way over, make sure you sanitize, touching doors, all that stuff there, things that you bring home. Make sure you're doing everything you can to be safe. Okay? That's our prayer. God bless you. I'll see you on Friday for our time of prayer.